I'm Taylor. And I'm Courtney. Welcome to the Tsunami Summer, Summer Show. Show. So friends, in today's episode of Can You, I'm going to test Taylor's abilities to catch marshmallows in his mouth. Missed that one. <laughs> All right, that's enough. I'm pretty good at this though, so I think. Uh, I mean, can I you? Think we can, I can, let's just do one right here, ready? Okay, ready? Throw it. One. Nope, not hard. <laughs> Go. One, two, three. <laughs> this is not gonna be good if she's throwing these. Woo! Woo! Yeah, yeah, see, all day. Can you? I think there was a hair on that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's see if you can do this. I'm, I'm gonna, we're gonna put him in strategic locations around our incredible set because what a waste of inflatables not to hang out in them, you know? So here we go. Taylor, can you? So the question is, can you? Let's see, let's see if Taylor can. Okay. It's gotta be good throws. Okay, good throws, only good throws. Oh, on the nose not, of the... Not the unicorn. Unicorn. One, two, three. Oh, he shoots, he scores, the crowd goes wild. Okay, let's see, can you do this again? Ready, you're behind the giant pug. I'm gonna hit the microphone. Do it. Okay, it's fine, it's fine, I got this. One, two, three. Oh, he got it. Did you see that? Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor is a professional marshmallow. Uh, as I'm running, ready? Okay, one, Go. two, three. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> one more time, one more time. Oh! All day. All day. Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor can. Let's see if Courtney can. Oh! Ah! I can hit him in the head all day. Hey guys, so thanks for joining us. Um, we want to invite you guys tonight into a conversation. Yes, a conversation yes. with one of our very dear friends who you might recognize. This is Kaylee Psychleather, and she is a part of the worship team here. She leads worship at Tsunami a lot, and she's awesome, and you guys are gonna learn a lot from her because she's pretty great. Do you want to say anything to them? Hello. Awesome. <laughs> that's, a gr that's a great place <laughs> that's to start. Great, yeah. yeah. That's um, a great hello. greeting. Um, we have a very, very serious question that you need to start with. Yeah, go for it. We've asked all of our guests this because yeah. it's just a great question. What do you think of our beautiful set in here? I'm gonna take it in real quick. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to take in, Kaylee. It really is. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, flow-tastic. <laughs> flow-tastic. I love oh, it. No, but I really love the unicorn. Okay, I was gonna ask you, what is your favorite? Um, it's look? like over my shoulder. Yes. And then I have this guy too. Yes. Out. Yeah, you're He's just kind surrounded. He's sad by looking. He has like sad eyes, the sad unicorn. He does. But yes. Also, my nice. nieces, they love unicorns. Yes. They're obsessed with unicorns. So mm -hmm. anytime I see them, I think of them. Yeah. So that's why I like them. We're glad you feel at home with us. I, I do feel unicorns. at home. <laughs> in our and fantastic I environment. Seen. And I know that I won't ever sink here. If, so. the, if the room flooded, we'd be good. Yeah. Um, well, today our topic of conversation is hope. Yes. Hope. Um, and it's something we talk a lot about in church. Mm -hmm. um, For sure. But so Kaylee, we'd love to start with just asking you, what's the first thing that you think of when you think of hope? Um, I mean, I think that the first thing that you think of is like, I hope for something good. Mm. Maybe it's just like more of yourself. Like I hope this for myself or mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think of like, you know how you like, cross your fingers and you're like, oh man, I hope yes. I win this game or Monopoly or yes, I don't know, any kind of board game. You're just like, I hope this happens. Yes. I think from a self point of view, that's yeah. what I think of. Like, yeah. I hope yeah. this happens for me. Yeah. Um, a good thing to yeah. happen. That's a great, that's a great starting point because we do, when we think of hope, we think about receiving something that we want, I think. And that's natural for all of us, yeah. right? To be thinking about things that we want or desire yeah, or sure. we think would make us happy or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. I, I think it's like based on this like uh, circumstantial situation. Mm -hmm. So like based off of the situation, this is what I would hope for, but it's also expressed with, through a lot of uncertainty. Yeah. So you don't really know how it's going to play out. Yeah. So that kind of feels like when you're stepping into this moment of uncertainty, you just feel out of place, you feel shaky, you don't, mm -hmm. you don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's where a lot of us kind of walk into a lot without mm -hmm. even realizing it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And hope's that thing that we long for in that space. Like it's the, the something beyond what we're experiencing, the uncertainty, the wherever we are, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so if that's the way we're thinking about hope, um, how does that play out in just how we live or how, how you, how you live your life? Like how have you seen hope expressed in just your day to day? Uh, good question. <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, well, so I think there is obviously the, because in my head I think of it like there's two different types of hope. There's that circumstantial hope, mm -hmm. which is expressed through uncertainty. And then there's the biblical hope, which is expressed through certainty. Mm -hmm. So like the actual, I guess definition, mm -hmm. Webster definition of hope is this like expectant, confident in what God is gonna do. And then its strength is through faithfulness. So in other words, it's like this, I'm gonna have this confident yes that I know what God is gonna do. Mm -hmm. And the strength that I'm gonna use is faith. Yes. So faith is kinda, it's like, it's the hope that we want for in the future. Uh -huh. So how I live that every day, I mean, I see it more now uh -huh. than ever because things are not, like things are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. So like the circumstantial stuff are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And so if I put my hope in that, it's just gonna be canceled. Yeah. So I was supposed to go to Florida last week. Hashtag weekend. no fuse canceled. <laughs> yeah, Sand. seriously. This week, I mean, fine. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Mm -hmm. uh, like I was supposed to go to Florida last week and that just got canceled. Mm -hmm. And so things are just constantly being like, canceled, things are changing consistently. And so I'm seeing now more than ever, like my hope can't be on the things that won't last forever. The things yes. that are not gonna be stable, the things that are not gonna be consistent or the things that are not gonna be um, certain. Yeah. And so hope in God, how that plays out is just asking myself more like, who is God? Mm -hmm. Who, what does God say about me? Mm -hmm. And then I can live with this authority that I believe from this place of faith and hope mm -hmm. for the future. Yes. And that's what keeps me stable. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Like, keeps me floating. I yep. Yes. <laughs> you don't, you don't need the one of these. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, you have your faith in <laughs> Jesus, um, and that keeps you afloat. Yeah. Oh, way to bring all the cheese for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But seriously, <laughs> you know. Um, something that you said, though, just made me think the illustration of how faith and hope work together because it's like hope is, this is a really, I'm gonna just go ahead and own it, kind of probably a cheesy analogy, but just go with me. Um, so if faith is like the car, I mean, if hope is the car, it's like faith is the engine that makes it run, that like helps propel it forward. So it's the, it's, it's the energy behind what moves you um, and what grounds you and keeps it moving, if that makes sense. I feel like a way maybe for students to be able to kind of connect those two things together. Yeah. yeah. My favorite verse of all times, Romans 5, 5, and hope doesn't put us to shame. And, it's, and that's saying if it's in Christ, like we can be confident in our hope. And to me, like it's been a reoccurring thing in my life because it, I constantly put hope in other things. Like that, I think that's the human condition, yeah. that's sin, like it expresses its way, like that constantly. And so like the reminder just, when hope is in Christ, like we won't be disappointed and we won't feel the shame and we won't feel the weight or the burden. Mm -hmm. And that's refreshing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, because you know that God is like in full control of yeah. that. So that's yeah. what you can kind of rest in. Like even if you don't see it like moving or things are going the way that you want it, like God is still in control. He knows the future, so yes. Well, so I got one last question. It's what has God taught you about hope? So like you, and you've kind of explained that, yeah, sure. but there are stages to how God teaches us things, right? And, mm -hmm. and it's a journey and sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's hard and it's being stretched and learning. So how would you say you could point to something and be like, that's how God taught me hope, you know, like, Maybe it was a circumstance, maybe, or just in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or even a verse can speak to that. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to 
Okay, I have a verse. I'll, can I share a verse? Yeah, please, right. please, please. Right. So, in Psalms 42... <coughs> um, Excuse me. Oh. No corona. Not water. It was water. No it was corona. water. Yes. Uh, okay, so in Psalms 42, David is talking a lot about how his soul is just like in turmoil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Classic David. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's saying like, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? And then it says, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my savior and my God. And he keeps saying that same thing. Like, again, he's like, put your hope in God. Even though your soul is downcast, put your hope in God. So for me, this, when I read this, the thing that I learned about hope in this is that it's okay to feel reality and mm -hmm. to understand that things are really downcast, turmoil, all that thing is like, it's just chaos. It's okay to recognize that. Um, but what I love in here is this picture is, I see the reality, but in the same breath, I'm still gonna say, put my hope in God. <laughs> so it's this, this picture of, I see reality, but in the same breath, I'm still gonna recognize the sovereignty of God, mm -hmm. that he's in full control of everything that's happening. So I think for me right now, where we're at mm -hmm. in this season, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remind myself of that with COVID. Like I can recognize everything that's happening and I can feel the emotions that I have, but it doesn't dictate my hope in God. Like that's not gonna change. And so yet yeah, I can still praise him. I can still worship him. I can still give him the glory. Mm -hmm. so. And I love the text that you chose because it's saying, I put my hope in God, put my hope in God. It's almost like declaring, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this over and over again, yes. Like it illustrates the fact that it's not easy to put your hope in God when your soul is in turmoil, when you're experiencing hard things. That's not natural. That's actually contrary to what is natural. When we feel sad and things are hard, we wanna like veg out and watch Netflix and do nothing that has to do with hope or God sometimes. But I love that David, he's, he's in the battle to put his hope in God and to remind himself that that is what is going to restore his soul, putting his hope in God over and over and over again. You know, I mean, I feel like for me personally, I see that in my life, that when things are hard, I have to remind myself to put my hope in God because that's not the natural course. Yeah, how do you, so how do you practice hope? in that? Mm, that's a great question. I think for me, a lot of it goes back to reading a text like you just read. Um, you know, I, in difficult times, I find myself going to Psalms in particular, um, or just reading, and I like to actually, <laughs> friends, hand letter things. Like if I write out a text, it helps me. So like that's something that I do because it slows down my mind enough to like concentrate and like seep in, like let let the words like become a part of me, not just something that I'm reading words on a page. Does that make sense? So I think that's one way and also worship, which is one way for me, which I know it's probably a way for you if I ask that question too. Um, but, but in all seriousness, um, I think declaring truth in song and like listening to it, like a lot of times I'll put my headphones in and I'll go on a walk and I'll just listen to a song on repeat that I know is going to speak hope into me and truth into me. Cause I just have to get with God. I mean, ultimately, whatever, it, whatever you can do to help align your heart and like move towards God is what I want to do in those moments. And I, I would just say like, it's important to care still. You know, like I, I can sense myself sometimes wanting to say, well, I have faith in God and I have hope. And so it's easy to not care about some things, you know? And so to stay active in my hope is important and keep my mind like, no, I'm going to have hope in this situation, not just not think about it, you know? So, and, and I think that's a healthy place to be, especially for students. Yeah, for sure. What would you say, Kaylee? I, I mean, I would definitely agree with the, the worship. For me to be able to like speak it out for some reason helps me. <laughs> and uh, it helps me remember scripture as well. So it's almost like any melody that you hear as a kid, you'll remember every single word for it. Like there's a reason why the alphabet has a melody to it so you can remember it. And so I think that's the same way with worship is scripture is put into a melody for us to remember. So in those moments where I'm like, really, really downcast and super 
sad or frustrated, just like I, I'll hear a song and I'm like, okay, let's just sing that out. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely think that is the biggest thing for me, yeah. for sure. It like awakens your heart. It like reminds your heart. It says, wake up. Like there's more to this right now than what you feel and what you're thinking. Um, even as you said that, because speaking out loud is something I feel like is so important for so many people, like that they connect with things when they're able to talk about it. I think sometimes having like a quality conversation with a friend is a great way to actually grow in your faith and hope. You know, and whether that's like your best friend or your small group leader, I do feel like that's one way that you can actually cultivate and like grow in living in a way that is hopeful yeah. So, yeah. and faithful, which is cool. The beauty of community. The beauty of community. I love it. I love it. We've talked about community a lot, and I feel like that is something that is so important. So, also in this, also in hope, for sure. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kaylee. Thank you. This was awesome. Yeah. Awesome conversation on hope. Yes. Thank it was. You it was also Kaylee's first interview, and she did awesome, didn't you guys? Just killed saying. It. She killed it. She's a rock star. Uh, good times. Okay. Cool. Thank you guys. We'll see you guys soon. Yes. Bye, friends. So thanks, friends, for joining us for the tsunami summer show. Yes, and the show is over, but we still have something for you guys to do this yes. week. Uh, and a little something we like to call Grow, Grow on, on Your, your own. own, which is really just a fancy way of saying we want to give you guys something to do and think about. So we have a scripture verse for you guys and a few questions that will just kind of help you process this conversation and what God says about it. So screenshot it, keep it, think about it, you know, do all the things. And then we'll see you back here next week. Tsunami out. <laughs>